What's going on, YouTube fam? This is the Wealth Investing Network. We do this for the win. You're getting a sneak peek into my stock portfolio and a sneak peek into my research on stocks. Today, we're talking about good old ChargePoint and newcomer to the stock market, EVGO. And why don't you just go ahead and give me an early like on this video and subscribe if you're new to help the channel grow. These things help me help improve the content for you. And that's what I call a win-win. We like that here at the Wealth Investing Network. So we know that both ChargePoint and EVGO were brought to the stock market within the last year. And it's a wild ride when these types of companies are brought to the market. SPACs or special purpose acquisition companies are known to be volatile. It's a much faster way for companies to have their IPO or initial public offering. As we know, these used to have different ticker symbols and traded around $10 until a merger was announced. There's often a lot of hype, good news, bad news. But once the merger happens, things tend to calm down a little bit. We've seen that for ChargePoint. And EVGO did come back to this $10, $11 range. They haven't even had their first earnings report yet as a public company. ChargePoint had their earnings relatively recently. They did better than expected when it came to sales, and they offered strong guidance. They inked a charging deal with GM. This will give their customers access to a lot more plugs. And really, they're striking up partnerships all over the place. And it's a good sign that they're a major player in the space because in April, President Biden pushed a huge multi-billion dollar plan to spur the adoption of electric vehicles. And he's talking about a national network of over 500,000 charging stations. And as we know, ChargePoint has one of the largest charging networks. In terms of level two charging in the United States, they have dominated in terms of market share. They've got over 150,000 ports. They've got all three levels of charging, home charging, public charging, software, they're growing at a tremendous pace, but really all the EV charging companies are growing kind of relative to EV adoption. What I think makes ChargePoint stand out is their market share and how they run their business. They sell their hardware and with their focus on software and services, the more people that use ChargePoint, the better, because if you're looking for a place to charge in public, they're probably going to be your best bet wherever you are. And even if it's not one of their charging stations that they produce, it's a partnered station in their network. And so for these reasons, I think you can see why people are pretty excited about this stock. But on occasion, it does bump down to these levels in the low $20 range. And I think both for ChargePoint and EVGO, they're not profitable companies considered somewhat speculative. So at different times, they have come down pretty hard. So now what I want to do is contrast ChargePoint's model with EVGO's model. Their invested presentation is a little busy here, but I want to highlight they have a fully integrated business model and they're all about reliable, fast charging. So they want to develop, own it, and operate it basically every step of the way. Unlike ChargePoint, who's more about selling their hardware and getting into the software game. You could maybe say that EVGO is kind of copying Tesla's model in terms of fast charging. Although Tesla has all levels of charging, their superchargers, their fast chargers, level three chargers, those are all synonyms. They completely own and operate all of them instead of selling them. And it's been a successful model for them. You could definitely make the argument that fast charging is the future. And I think it'll be interesting if Tesla opens up their superchargers or their charging stations in general to other cars besides Tesla, because right now that's what it is. Now, the reason to focus on the fastest way to charge is because if you're on the go, you can at least get a decent charge in 30 minutes. 30 minutes might not get you all the way charged. It depends on the car and a lot of different factors, but it's solid and much faster than level two. But when we're talking in public charging, you got to consider the costs. Level one doesn't cost that much. For level two, you're talking $2,000 on the high end. And for level three, we're talking $10,000 on the low end and $40,000 on the high end. And so if you're just doing level three, maybe that simplifies your business, but I think it also puts you in a little bit of a box. And of course, we also have to talk about the cost for the consumer. Now, this is going to depend on a lot of factors. I found this article that specifically talks about EVGO. It gives an example of how they charge per minute in the Chicago area. And because fast charging is the most expensive, essentially what they're saying is that it can cost more to charge an electric vehicle than to charge a gas powered vehicle to travel the same distance. And of course, that depends on the price of gas as well. But a benefit of charging is that it's supposed to cost less and home charging is still the most frugal alternative. Again, prices can vary on all this, but the takeaway way is that DC fast charging might be more convenient, but it's definitely more expensive. EVGO is the pure play market leader because they just do DC fast charging. It seems like they have less than a thousand DC fast charging sites. They're not even in all 50 states in the US, but they're claiming impressive growth. And a lot of that might be fueled by their contract with GM. 
So that's definitely a plus. They say they have 50% retail DC market share. And you see this little footnote here? They're excluding Tesla, of course. That just seems wrong when Tesla has over 25,000 superchargers. They still say they have 34% market share of urban DC fast charging based on plug shares data. I wanted to see that for myself because I wanted to do my own research. Of course, you should do the same because I'm not a financial advisor. But when I tried to do so, one of the first things that came up was that EVgo acquired plug share, apparently paid about $25 million for it. And plug share is kind of like Gas Buddy. If you've ever heard of that, Gas Buddy will tell you about where you can fill up in your area and at what prices. And it's neutral. It's not going to tell you just to go to BPs or shells or whatever. Apparently, plug share was the same way. It could tell you where you could charge, but they're supposed to be neutral. An EV charging company buying them throws that neutrality into question. But EVgo definitely has enough money to start buying stuff. By going public, they got over $500 million to add to their balance sheet in cash. ChargePoint got about the same and they're already spending money too. They just bought a Volkswagen backed charging software firm for $295 million. And this should help their expansion in Europe. Now, one thing I've struggled with in making this video is nailing down the financial picture for both of these companies. For EVgo especially, we have very rough estimates and everything is in flux. They say that they're gonna grow at these exponential rates over the next several years. And they say they're gonna spend double, triple, some years even quadruple what they bring in in revenue. But eventually by 2026, five years out, they'll be free cash flow positive. ChargePoint paid in a similar story, except with slightly lower growth rates. But who knows what's gonna happen years from now. Let's focus on the present. Currently, we've got their stock prices and more importantly, their market caps or what the market is valuing these companies at at the moment. According to the market, EVgo is about half as big as ChargePoint. So keep that in mind. The shares outstanding are still in flux because these are relatively new companies. The PE ratio or price to earnings ratio is a measure of profitability. These companies won't have a positive PE ratio for a long time. So one of the most important metrics is going to be the price to sales ratio. Now you want this number to be as close to one as possible because it's the market cap divided by the total revenue in the last 12 months. The higher the number this is, the more of a multiple you're paying on their revenue to get to that market cap. For context, the average price to sales ratio in the S&P 500 is usually in the single digits, a little higher for tech companies, Tesla's roughly 20, and we've got charge point here sitting at about 49. That's generally high, but a reason to pay a higher multiple is growth because it assumes that they can grow their revenue quickly enough to meet that market cap. The stock market is generally a little forward looking. I don't have an official growth number for EVgo right now, but generally they're expected to grow a lot faster than ChargePoint. But right now, a price to sales ratio above 200 is more in the realm of a blink charging. And we've talked on the channel before about why that's overvalued. I'll leave a link in the description and in the cards. And so I'm just gonna say this is not a company that I'm interested in based on these figures. I'm happy to wait until they actually prove what they're talking about with these growth rates because right now all I can see is that they're burning through cash. And like I said already, these companies are spending way more than they're making. But ChargePoint is a capital light type of business while EVgo is a capital heavy kind of business. They're trying to own and operate everything. I like that they have a really nice cash position and basically no debt. But from everything I've seen, EVgo has not matched up to ChargePoint. But I want to hear from you. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you so, so much for watching. Check out my previous videos on EV charging. I'll leave them in the description, the cards, all those things. I've got to go climb a ladder. See you in the next video.